Good day, everybody. Uh, I'm Don Wycliffe, member of the Notre Dame class of 1969, co-editor of Black Domers, African-American students at Notre Dame in their own words. Today we have two Black Domers essayists from the decade 2000 to 2010. I'd like to ask them in a few moments to uh, introduce themselves. Uh, but first, I'd like to have my friend and partner in this endeavor introduce himself. David? Well, well, thank you, Don. I'm David Crash, and I'm a 1971 graduate and proudly a co-editor with my esteemed friend from many years ago, Don Wycliffe. Thank you. And now, uh, essayists, if you would. <laughs> Carol? <laughs> Hi, and thank you so much for having us um, share in this conversation. I'm Carol Anderson. I am the class of 2000 in the MBA program. Hi, and my name is Jatan Davis. I'm a 2005 Notre Dame undergraduate alum. So happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'd like to begin, Jatan, by reading something to you. Okay. And uh, <laughs> it goes thus. After returning home, I thought Notre Dame was a pretty good choice. It's being predominantly white was a good attribute in my opinion. Although I had attended a public high school with a rather diverse student body, I had still been raised in Atlanta where there was a large black population. Therefore, I wanted a college experience that would prepare me for the world outside of Atlanta where I would need to know how to interact and thrive among people with different perspectives and backgrounds. Stepping outside of my comfort zone, I thought, would give me the best reward in the end. Um, I guess I'd like to ask you, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to say, to me, that demonstrates a remarkable maturity in a high school student uh, uh, picking a college. And I'd like to ask you, did your Notre Dame experience live up to what you had hoped for when you made that calculation and uh, have you gotten that best reward that you sought? And then I'd like to follow up. Okay. <laughs> so so it's, it's interesting <clears throat> having you read that back to me because the first opening, I, uh, I kind of grimace now. It's like, you know, it being a predominantly white institution, that was a, that was a great thing. But no, when you finish it, 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 it was for me. And I don't know who helped me think about life or my college choice in, in that in that way, but it gave me that. Absolutely. Notre, Notre Dame prepared me for a world um, where power is in the hands of the majority um, or the historic majority rather. And uh, a specific example that I can give is once I graduated from Notre Dame, I did return to Atlanta for a bit, but I did transfer out to California. Um, and I was one of the only female managers at my time at Yellow Pages, um, uh, yellowpages.com in California. And I specifically remember being in a meeting and looking around the room and being the only black person in the room. Mm -hmm. And not only did that happen to me at yellowpages.com, but I also transitioned from internet marketing to higher ed. And I was working at, at Notre Dame for, for four years. And I was the only yes. black leader um, in the enrollment division in meetings. And although I noticed it, I didn't flinch a bit in terms of expressing my ideas and what I felt like wasn't being presented. So it absolutely <laughs> prepared me for that. Okay. My, my follow-up is, uh, did you encounter that same kind of maturity in your white fellow students at Notre Dame? Were they eager to, did they appreciate that there's a big wide world out there full of people who don't look like them? And, uh, and that it might benefit them to get to know you, get to know other black students and 
other peoples from other places. Yeah. It's been a while since I graduated. <laughs> Let me try to remember. Um, but if I have to say, thinking about my experience, thinking about working with students at Notre Dame, um, generally speaking, no, you don't really have to think about that. Um, so no, I don't think that was, that was really top of mind for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, presumably that's something the university could work on, do something about, or does it need to? Well, that's a loaded question. So, so since my being a, it's, it's a, it's a complex question because what I hear you asking is, should the university ensure that students that are choosing the University of Notre Dame are looking for a university that's going to um, ensure that they are comfortable interacting with people all over the world? So actually, in saying that question back to you, yes, I think the university should do that, right? Uh -huh. um, but I think when people choose universities, no matter who you are, I mean, even other, other black students, you're choosing a university for a different reason, right? When students choose to go to HBCUs, they're choosing to go for a particular reason. So not everybody is looking for the same thing in the college. Right. Um, but you know, Notre Dame being a, an institution that educates global citizens, uh, you would definitely think that that is something that is, is, um, is done and is promoted. And I, I, I want to be, you know, candid in that when I'm speaking, I'm speaking from being a student and also an employee of the university. Um, I was also an instructor. I was at Notre Dame when they uh, implemented the Moreau Fauchier Studies uh, program, which had a lot of components of cultural competency in it. And there were mixed feelings about it. I personally thought like this was a great opportunity because every single Notre Dame student was required to take that course. So this was to be discussed with every single student at Notre Dame. Uh, but there, you know, there was some, some criticism of, of how that cultural competency component was, was implemented. So, um, so I say all that to say that I think it's, a, it's attempting or it was attempting um, to, to definitely do that, but Obviously, there's always, you know, more work that can be done. And I think because Notre Dame is, is a university that is Catholic, right, has great ideals and, and is for the, the common good of all, that the expectation and the standard is set higher. Mm -hmm. yes. Carol, you come at all this from a different angle. You were a graduate student and a graduate of a Notre Dame rival, USC, right. <laughs> and uh, yeah. a West Coaster, and, right. and actually an immigrant. Am I correct. right? That's all correct. Okay. Yeah, my perspective is um, actually similar to Jatan's. I think that Notre Dame, by its sheer um, standard, its sheer nature, it being a Catholic uh, university, one that stands up uh, stands for high ideals, has a responsibility to ensure that those who show up on that campus, whether employees or students, or undergrads or graduates, or anyone who's a part of that uh, college campus environment, I think the university has a responsibility to lay forth a culture of acceptance and uh, curiosity and um, I don't like the word tolerance because it feels sort of like you're just, people are just there and okay, you're over there as long as you hold your space. Mm -hmm. I'm, I am more about acceptance. I think it's the mic, it's a, it represents a microcosm. It's a microcosm of what the United States is with a difference in that we hold Catholic ideal so high, um, which we who choose to go there expect to have the, um, the values and characteristics that show up with the Catholic ideal to protect 
and to ensure that all who are on that campus or who are affiliated with the university um, present in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't uh, familiar with the, with the coursework, but I think those are kind of the kinds of things, whether it's not implemented perfectly or whatever, but I think along those lines are some of the things that the university can do to ensure that students feel safe uh, on campus. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, I absolutely uh, agree with that, that part. I think it's a responsibility. Sure. David, do you have anything you wanna? Oh, for sure. And let me start off with uh, Carol and Jatom, you should climb in, uh, chime in as well. Now, Carol, how, first of all, you know we really like you as a USC undergrad. Uh, inviting you to our event. So uh, welcome for sure. So how would uh, each of you describe your Notre Dame experience in relation to the racial climate of your time? And then quickly, would you then tell us your observations of the other students, other black students at the time that you were at Notre Dame, a very exciting time. And maybe we should talk about what happened in your decade here in the a, a moment. But Carol, how would you respond to that, first of all? Well, as an adult, I, you know, I came to Notre Dame as an adult. So I came as someone who had, you know, uh, fixed experiences and wide experiences, particularly as an immigrant and an extensive traveler. So I've been all over the world. And so coming with kind of purview um, to the university, I had a strong sense of self. So I didn't feel like um, you know, I, I, what I experienced could necessarily push me in any particular direction, like an undergrad might, might experience, right, as an 18 to 22 year old. Um, I did, however, experience classmates that weren't most favorable to interact with. And at the end of it, I literally used time, I stayed on campus a little after graduation and then took a long road trip to get back home to California and meandered across the country um, before I got home because I felt the need to literally release all of the angst and stress and negative experiences that I had um, from classmates. I must say though, the administration was phenomenal to me in my experience. Um, and then of course, as you are familiar, I spent 11 years serving on the Black Alumni of Notre Dame board directors and had, again, very hands-on interactions and experiences with the administration that I saw that they were trying uh, to do the best they could possibly um, to understand, one, and two, to create some solutions. I think there, there's room for more um, that comes from kinds of conversations that are necessary with all of the diverse groups on campus. Um, each of us experience may have different factors that affect uh, our ethnicities or ethnic groups. And then within those groups, there are other issues. So that's a long answer. Um, there's more to that um, uh, that I could go into. But my, my colleagues in my course, in my class, there were very challenging experiences with some of them. Some, some things that I thought were just outright un unethical. Um, and making a complaint to a professor did nothing. It was more about, well, you ought to know how to negotiate these things through these things with your peers, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of a thing um, I just felt was unsavory. And I don't think that I um, necessarily had the wherewithal or the know-how to navigate that on my own. So I just took what I could and continued to do the best I could to perform well. Um, with it inside of it. Thank you, Carol. And Jatan, how, what would your response to be uh, to that as well? So lots of, lots of thoughts here. Um, I mean, my undergraduate experience in terms of an interacting with students, like nothing negative stands out. That nothing negative stands out. I had roommates who, you know, were white, um, but, I happen to be there. There's a couple of things. Just because that was my experience doesn't mean that that was other people's experience. There are a number of things at play, which Carol um, alluded to, is that even 
speaking within the black community, there's colorism. I'm very fair. And um, I know that that is something that's definitely been a conversation on social media in, in today's day um, with all that's going on. So I'm very mindful of my privilege as the light skin and that perhaps some things that happened to, to my, my peers who were of darker complexion, they maybe have experienced. Um, still, with that being said, there were things that I did experience, which I know students continue to talk about. I think that's always going to be the case where people will assume that you are an athlete because you are of color and you are in Notre Dame. That happened while I was a student at Notre Dame, and it happens as an alum. When people hear, when I tell people that I attended Notre Dame, they say, oh, did you play sports? I'm like, no, I, I didn't, you know? Um, and of course, even that conversation causes, um, it has had caused some, um, some hard conversations or unsettling feelings among within the black community, right? Because then you have the, the, especially with the males, the black males who are not athletes versus those who are athletes. So um, those are some of the things that I remember as a student, those conversations. And, and I happened to also be in Notre Dame during the hiring and swift firing of Ty Willingham. And um, that, that definitely, you know, sent the message. <laughs> it, it, it definitely sent the message to us. And then, you know, oh, sorry. Go ahead, finish up, Jatan, sorry. Last, one last little sentence. I was gonna say the message really was, was just that he did, wasn't given much time to, to do much of anything. I, when I first started, Bob Davey was there and it, it seemed as if he was given a lot of time to kind of get things together named Tyrone Willingham, who was such a nice man. I knew a lot of the football players. And when they talked about Ty Willingham, you talk about someone who the players were just, they didn't want to disappoint him, right? So that's the deep reverence and respect that they had for him. And so for the administration to just fire him and, and didn't give him a chance at all, it really sent the message to to all the black students that were on campus i think alumni and administration at that time yeah and, and we were serving on the alumni board at the time i was serving on the alumni board at the time and i remember we um, made a statement um collectively about that um the the kinds of messages and i know that you know at the high level right at the highest level of managing an institution that is also an economic, you know, powerhouse in the city, in the state, um, that there's political uh, thing going on, right? You have to satisfy the alums, you have to satisfy the, those who are donors, you have to satisfy the, the students and their families. You, you know, there's, there's just this thing of you have how, how university has to balance it. But if we stand by the ideals we stand by, then we have a higher code of ethics from which we operate. And I think that should be the standard that um, the university uses, uh, the administration uses when it's coming down to those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously the, the financial and economic impact is a huge one because uh, that's, it's, it's still a business that's being run. Um, it's still an institution that has to be run well, and it requires that. Um, but when we're operating from the high, highest ideal possible, then it, it just makes, I, I just feel, I don't know how difficult or easy that would be, but this is what we say we stand for, right, as an institution. So why not use that as the base? Mm -hmm. I, I have to go back briefly to the Ty Willingham thing, because I just don't think anybody who isn't black, <laughs> perhaps, can can appreciate the, the the gravity of that. Particularly if you were around as I was when I came back to campus in 2006 and watched his successor flounder and and all through a contract, an extended contract, I believe, yep. and go on to fail upward uh, at Kansas and make many millions more. It just, it blew my mind. <laughs> it blew my mind. And uh, 
it still hurts today. Yeah. It, it, the process is stunning. And so I wonder if they stop to look at that and how it impacts the message that it sends to African-American students on campus or African-American staff and faculty, you know, because you extrapolate from that. If this is how this person is treated and this person is operating in a level of excellence and doing the best that they can at this point within the short time frame, is this how I will be treated in my employment? Is this how I will be treated as a student who may have some struggles in particular areas? Am I gonna get the kind of support that will move me to success or not, right? I mean, that's, that's how it's read, that's how it's experienced and that's how it's seen. Yeah. Well, Don, let me, let me ask a question here. We're, we're, we're concerned about the current black student population at this time. And I would hope you have seen the Young Black Alumni Petition and within its preface or preamble, it sets forth a number of grievances, testimonials. First of all, what's your reflection on some of those testimonials? And what do you think Nerdame can specifically do to remedy, if you think that they can remedy any of those issues? And either of you can start the answer that you choose. Huh? Are you sure? Or, or, okay, let's take uh, jotting down some notes here. So, I think uh, I'm familiar with the petition. I read the petition. I signed the petition. I um, know some of the students who are alumni who organized that petition and was at Notre Dame while some of them were there and and was familiar with some of the grievances and issues that they had had and. There are measures in place, so there are departments in place, uh, uh, Department of Institutional Equity at Notre Dame. There, there are these offices and, and processes in place that are supposed to serve as the checks and balances, you know, for, for these issues and, and still, right, um, these things happen. So I don't know that I think, think this is a world issue. I don't think it's gonna ever be solved, but I think it's something that we should always aspire to, and especially at, at Notre Dame, again, as we talked about an institution that that stands for so much um, in this world. I think that, you know, I want to say a lot of things that I've witnessed that I've seen that I've observed. It's some of it may be um, downright discrimination or, or things like that, especially now with the current political um, climate that we're in. But a lot of it is, I think, unconscious that and I've been thinking about this a lot. I don't want to derail us, but Notre Dame is a university that's really, really, really big on tradition. And I remember coming and, and you know, I'm an alum and, and working at university at Notre Dame and, and hearing about tradition. And tradition, it's it, it's great. It feels great. It connects us to something that's longstanding. But you really got to think about what's rooted in traditions. What is it built on, right? It's like, so this, you know, a lot of things are institutional, these unconscious biases, these, these things. And so there's, I know there's training for unconscious bias, but I think really focusing on these things that we kind of don't realize that we're doing, or some in the university don't realize they're doing. Um, I want to give an example of a situation that, that was brought to me while I was in Notre Dame, and I advised that student on how to, to navigate um, that the situation, but perhaps when a student is seeking out uh, guidance from an advisor about a particular major, uh, a student was thinking about pre-med, and they were struggling in a science course, and the student and other students that were there they were felt like they were quickly advised to give up the pre-med major and pursue something else whereas they felt as if their peers who who um you know caucasian minor uh, white students were told to stick it out a little bit more so obviously you know situations are very unique but those are some things that not only happen in one-on-one -on -one conversations, but the students get together and talk about it, and that leaves a lasting, you know, um, feeling uh, with a student and their experience at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jacob. 
Carol? Yeah, I signed the petition as well. And you know what I was surprised or not surprised? Well, I was surprised actually that the complaints were the same that had happened years ago and that we've heard historically years before and then before that. And that tends to be very frustrating. I can imagine for the young people experiencing it now, they just are at a loss, right? Because here they are in this environment that, as I shared before, is a microcosm of the world. And they know that once they leave Notre Dame, they'll get into the world and they'll experience a lot more of this. Um, I feel like there's a way that from the top, you can build the culture of acceptance and you know, no tolerance for anything other than equity, other than inclusion. I mean, there has to be a way. It's done in corporations, even where, um, you know, people fight back because they like tradition. They like the way things have always been. And they typically like the way things have always been because it's in their, built in their favor, right? So how do we now, with awareness, um, with all the political and um, racial issues that have just come to the fore in the United States at this time. And even for the last however many years, it's not new news. You know, so it's frustrating that this new class of young people are experiencing the same things that, you know, those that came before them, for which the Black Alumni Board, you know, of directors was created to help the university to understand, better understand what are some of our needs and how to help alleviate some of the challenges that they were experiencing in this regard, they seem to not know how to deal with. You know, what, what, the, the adults in the room should be having the conversation and the, and the difficult conversations. Make people feel uncomfortable. If, if getting off of your privilege makes you uncomfortable and that's what needs to happen to safeguard these babies, it has to happen. It has to I happen. Just, I just want to say that something that is really um, amazed me and I think about a lot and is that while all of this is still happening, you, we also see the st students, some students, particularly student athletes, being supported and their advocacy and they're using their platform to bring awareness to issues. And I know, I think it started before I got there, but while I was there, you saw with uh, Muffet McGraw and the women's basketball team and they wore I Can't Breathe shirts. And what you continue to see, to see now, it, it's, it's so interesting how we have that, right? So that outward facing, that, that right. advocacy, but then at the same time, you know, you're still having other things that are happening on campus. Right. But that's why I think it's institutional, right? Because there are certain things that it feels as if the administration is saying, okay, yeah, that's okay. That's not too much trouble. They can do that over there. But the, the deep rooted, you know, systemic issues um, don't seem to get uprooted and dealt with and addressed. And that's where I think it has to happen, right? Because that's how you change the culture of the environment. So if the culture of the environment comes, if you are part of this Notre Dame family, you are not going to be left behind. You're not going to be left unsafe. You're not going to be left unprotected, right? And if a student, one student experiences something where their peers are doing things to them that's just not... I mean, so unsavory, some of the things that these young people do, it's just amazing that they think to do these really cruel things to each other. And we don't do anything about it, you know, where, or, or it gets to be continued, or a student doesn't feel like they have a safe place to go to make a complaint and have it get investigated and dealt with swiftly. You know, that kind of thing shouldn't be happening. And I know it's worldwide, I know it's nationwide, I know it's universities all across the United States, but we're at Notre Dame and we're part of this family that we believe in, that we stand up for, that we speak proudly of. We want to be proud of the standards by which we um, safeguard all of our family members. Mm -hmm. you know? Thank you, Carol. And we have about one minute. Anybody want to make a last remark? 
David? <laughs> no, I'm just so pleased with this conversation. I personally want to thank each of you for your participation. And if you have concluding remarks, please do. Ladies, I have nothing more. I just want to thank you both for, uh, for your time and your observations and your thoughtfulness. It's, 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 it's wonderful. And uh, I? I hope this will be a, a good spur as people read our book and, uh, and learn to appreciate the experiences of African-American students at Notre Dame in their own words. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just say that even even um, as a USC alum, uh, you know, people ask me all the time about my uh, affiliations with both. I, I really have a deep love for Notre Dame, as you know, um, and I chose it because I expected my experience to be of the same familial experience I've had at USC, and it proved itself right. Um, I think partly because of the connections and the relationships that I've chosen to make and being directly involved at university, being part of the solution is why it has been of value to me. So I encourage others to really um, stay connected because that's how we will create the solution and our, all of our voices need, need to be heard so that we can help the administration understand better ways to deal with some of these challenges. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I was just trying to take in all the comments that were being shared and think of, you know, what to leave with. And, and we've talked about the vastness of the experience at, at Notre Dame. And, um, and for me, yeah, I definitely don't want to, there are issues, right, that, 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 that we all have to have to contribute to helping to solve. Um, but I don't want to leave this interview with the last, with the feeling of I didn't have a great experience or I'm not appreciative of my experience. As I, as we opened up the conversation, I said that I got exactly what I was looking for when I, when I attended Notre Dame and I've had people step up for me, uh, which I talked about in my essay. Uh, um, uh, and, uh, and Bob from admissions, he's, he's now retired, the director of admissions at Notre Dame and continue to step up for me in ways that I am forever grateful for. So I just want to make sure I don't leave this conversation with all the work that absolutely needs to be done and, and don't talk about the ways that, that Notre Dame has enriched my life and um, I'll forever be grateful for that as well. Thank you so much, Jatan. Thanks everybody and uh, Thank you very much. Good day.